the, tit the title of the third presentation today is Can XL Made Secure, which was prepared by Donjeta and Shani, Vivian Richards, and Harald Zweck. Uh, who isn't available today? So we will have two presenters for the coming presentation. Um, Donjeta and Shani currently works as a concept engineer for in vehicle communications at. Infineon Technologies. Previously, she worked as an application and hardware software engineers in startups in the industrial and home automation fields in Kosovo. She, hits, she holds a Master of Science degree in Communication Electronics from the Technical University of Munich and a Bachelor of Science degree focused in telecommunications from the University of Pristina. And the second presenter, Vivian Richards, also works as a concept engineer for in vehicle networks at Infineon for the past four years. He holds a Master of Science degree in communication electronics from the Technical University of Munich and a Bachelor of Engineering degree focused in electronics and communication engineering from the PSG College of Temp Technology in India. Well, Donjeta, please start with your presentation. Yeah. Thank you very much for the nice introduction, Torsten. Okay, so the last two presentations already gave a good overview of the security today. And now our topic is the security for tomorrow. So we will introduce the CanXL security protocol. As most of you already know that CanXL will bring new features. And with that, new opportunities for features for the CAN communication. One important, or better to say, a crucial feature for communication for the in-vehicle networks is the security. Thus, with the development of CAN Excel standard, we also started thinking about security. And fast forward today, we are here presenting the specification which is currently in development for CAN Excel secure communication. I need to highlight that um, this is a condensed presentation. So it does not provide a complete introduction of the protocol, but rather it provides the key concepts of the protocol. And I know that um, at the end, probably uh, there will be questions which we are happy to answer. However, not everything is already defined in the protocol. So it might be that questions are not yet, so not everything maybe is answered yet. So let me introduce the agenda. First part will be presented by my colleague, Mr. Richards where he will give some backgrounds on the motivation why a new security protocol is required and why for CanXL. Further, he will continue with the second point of core properties and concepts of the CanSec protocol. Afterwards, I will take over to present the protocol features, the frame format, etc. Then I will continue with a timeline view of the development of CanSec standard. And last part is the summary of takeaway points from this presentation. So now let me the... Thanks, Janita. Uh, so let's go forward with the motivation of why we need the security uh, on, on, on the CanXL. So as Donita already mentioned uh, during the introduction, so with the CanXL, we are introducing very new use cases, especially the, the door is open uh, when we are talking about the higher bandwidth and also for this longer frames of up to two kilobytes, which is offered with the CanXL data link uh, layer specifications. It also means that the CanXL will support Ethernet-like uh, features, and it also off offers the opportunities for, for, for improvements. Uh, here, the CanXL security must uh, be uh, future-proven, and it is seen as essential at this very moment. And CanSec, which is basically the security protocol for, uh, for the CanXL, uh, uh, is, is is, is, is meant to meant to prove prove all those points. With the CanSec, what we intend to have uh, is a unified and a standard security solution, which is adapted in industrial wide uh, uh, for the CanXL security. It, we also see performance Im improvements due to this CanSec uh, uh, CanSec protocol, and it also uses a proven security uh, methodology, and. It, it helps in filling up the security holes from the SECOZ. For example, the SECOZ, we see that it does not provide uh, encryptions where the CANSEC does. 
This is a picture which shows the, the uh, uh, stack uh, of, of uh, CANSEC and also the CANSEC COSI uh, onto, uh, uh, onto the same picture where you can see uh, on the SEC of C uh, that this, is, this lies very close to the application layer. Uh, let me just switch to the pointers. So it, it lies very close to the application layer, which means with the SECOC that you have your data link layer, which is in the hardware implementations, and then you have the software part, which includes the drivers for the CANs, the transport protocol optionally, and then going up to the application layer where the SECOC will be instantiated, uh, 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 which means that your SECOC could have either a hardware implementation or it could be done with the software uh, software part. So here you, you see that you, 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 you are not, we are not really uh, efficient uh, in terms of a data path uh, when we wanted to achieve the security. In the other hand, you see the CANSEC. So here we try to position the CANSEC very close to the data link uh, layer, uh, as it will be shown in the in, in the in the in the upcoming slides. Uh, but putting it close to the data link layer, this improves the the data path and also the performance, which means that you could start the secure processing of your can frames right from the beginning. Uh, it also guarantees that all your higher layer protocols are inherently uh, protected uh, with, with the CANSEC. So there is no new methodology required if you wanted to add your higher higher protocol layers uh, on the CANXL, which is especially also part of the uh, standardization committee uh, in, in the CANXL. Next, we look into the core properties and uh, concepts of the CANXL. So CANXL being a, being a layer two protocol and CANX, CANSEC, as I said, it works very close to the data link layer right after the, uh, right after the layer two. So this is a layer two plus protocol. And CANSEC, it provides integrity, authenticity. It also provides protection against the replay attacks and also privacy in terms of giving encryption. It identifies the replay attacks by using a monotonically increasing the freshness value. And it also supports key up updates during the ongoing communications. We also tried, we are also standardizing how the synchronization of the freshness value has to be done so that we have a unified methodology across the industry for cancer usage. It uses symmetric key cryptography. And then we go into introduction of secure zones, which is basically the core concept of, of, the, of, the, of the CANSEC. So what we see with the CANXL network is that due to the bus-based communication, you see that every node can listen to every frame. Uh, as, as you see in the picture, a uh, transmit frame uh, from a node A, it, has, it, it broadcasts to all, all the participants of the network so that each and every participant of the network can receive this frame. But in reality, it's not that all frames are relevant for the each nodes. For this example, you see that your node C does not require to process uh, the, the transmitting uh, frame from the node A. This is true for the security context as well, which means that not all CAN nodes in the CAN bus need to trust each other. This we in term call it, call it as a secure isolation. You could have a secure isolation due to an application need even within the network uh, of, the, of, of the same CAN bus. So the solution to create the security isolation is to have a secure zones. In the secure zones, if we create a virtual field across certain, certain nodes uh, in the CAN network, and by definition of the secure zone, only those participants of the, of, of the secure zone will be able to understand uh, each other uh, in terms of the secure, secure frames which means that this is possible that all only these nodes knows the key, which is, which is responsible for unlocking the, the secure, secure data. It also ensures that their management of the keys are made easier because, right, because with this approach, you, you divide those networks in terms of an application context, which is relevant for the security, and you try to manage the keys only on those sub-network and not to care about the entire uh, entire participants of the same network. With the understanding of the secure zone, we move forward to the concept of secure channels. So secure channels is basically the, the methodology which, which, will, which will be incorporated to establish the concept of secure zone. 
And each secure channel is basically a unidirectional point to multi point communications. For example, if the node A wants to talk to node B and D, it uses a secure channel A, uh, which is basically unidirectional from and the transmit point, point of view from the node A, and it gets received by both B and D Canexel nodes. Similarly, from the node D, if the node D is talking to A and B, the secure channel D, an additional secure channel D is established uh, uh, for the transmitting node D and for the receiving nodes A and B. And each secure channel will have a unique identifier, which is indicated by SEI. And this SEI is part of the, of the, of the CANSEC header, uh, which uh, uh, Donita will be showing uh, shortly in, in detail. And each secure channel has got following associations, and which means that you each secure channel you can have an active key and also an inactive key. Um, the reason to have both an active key and an inactive key is is to is to help the user uh, to update the key during the runtime so that you can switch from an active to an inactive key while you update the key. And updating of the key is an important property of establishing a secure secure net network because your keys also gets exhausted after after many usage of the same key. It also, each secure channel will also have a, its a relationship to a freshness value, which in turn guarantees uh, that the replay attacks are prevented. As you could see here from the secure channel A and D, what we have established before the secure channel A shares the same orange keys between the A, B and D, which means that whatever is transmitted in the secure channel A by the node A uses this, orange key so that the B and D could understand those frames. Similarly, when the secure channel D is wants to transmit, transmit its frames, it uses an independent secure channel D with the blue keys so that the A and B is, all, is, all, is always uh, uh, able to uh, understand those secure frames. Again, to be noted that your secure uh, node, your, your node, Canexel node C is excluded from all these communications because they don't have this key uh, uh, established uh, while the secure channels are being initialized over this network, which in terms means your secure channels makes your secure CAN zone realizable. In one short term, your secure channel basically defines the trust between the Canexel nodes. So each nodes in the secure channel can trust each other that they, what they transmit and what they receive between them is trustworthy and thus the security uh, uh, is established. For the next uh, part of the presentation, I will hand it over back to my colleague, Daniel. Thank you, Raven. So now let me introduce the CanSec protocol and its frame format. So as also shown earlier, CANSEC is a OSI layer two plus protocol. So it's between the LLC layer of the CANIC cell and the MAC layer. As an input, it gets the CANIC cell LLC frame. So this is a CANIC cell LLC frame shown here. So in, an L in the LLC frame, we have the arbitration field, we have the control field and the data field. This frame is, this frame is uh, not new as it was already repeated multiple times during this conference day, I assume. So these are the three parts. And this is provided as an input to CANSEC layer or to CANSEC entity, which further encapsulates the frames as follows. So this is encapsulated into another frame. So now we have some more bit fields added, which are added from the uh, CANSEC uh, entity. First, this. SAC, so this is the simple or extended content, it's equal to one to indicate that there is a higher layer protocol contained in this CANIC cell frame. Whether this is a fragmentation higher layer protocol or this is a security higher layer protocol. So this is equal to one. And then at the first part of the data field gives an identifier about which is the protocol. So it identifies in this case a cancel, but it can also identify other higher layer protocols. So for each of the higher layer protocols, a separate ID will be provided. And next part is the key. So the core property, so core field is the CANSEC header. And at the end of the uh, payload, so there is an authentication tag added to this frame. Further, this frame is um, added. So it's sent to the MAC layer of CAN LLC, which is adding the CRC field, acknowledgement field, and the so it completes a it makes a complete CAN Excel frame. 
So the authentication check is be calculated in uh, authentication value or, or the integrity check value across the complete LLC frame, as well as the CANSEC header itself. And optionally, the payload can be uh, encrypted. So this is the frame structure. Both the header and the payload are authenticated. The payload may also be optionally encrypted. And the structure is these three fields, which I ex will explain later. So first one is the identification field. And also sh as it's shown here is that, is that this is different from the priority. So the priority or the CAN ID does not necessarily, so does not identify a CAN security frame. Since in CAN Excel, this is a priority field only. So the ID does not give any meaning to the data itself. Then is the CANSEC header. And at the end, the tail is the authentication tag. So the, in, this, um, in, the, in this figure here, I have calculated the overhead added by the CANSEC protocol to a CAN Excel frame. And this is varying depending on the payload size. So not on the total CAN Excel frame, but only on the payload size. And here we can see that for up to 64 bytes of payload, the header overhead, which is added by CANSEC, it's significant, which also explains why such protocols were not possible in CAN or CANFD. But for larger payloads, so from 512 bytes or up to here, we see that the overhead added is insignificant compared to the information transferred. So now let me uh, show the CANSEC frame format. As I just explained in the beginning, there is the identification that this is the CANSEC frame, so that this CAN itself contains a CANSEC security, is this simple or extended content bit field, which is equal to one, and then is this SEC ID, which is part of the data field, and this indicates the protocol identifier, so the CANSEC encoding. Then is the CANSEC header. In the CANSEC header, the first part is the cipher control information. In the cipher control information, we have the version number. So this is specifying the version of the CANSEC protocol. And we know that enhancements are required. So if we have a version number, then we can do enhancements and we can still use the CANSEC protocol and map the version to a newer version of the protocol. The second field is the cipher mode. And the cipher mode indicates whether this can sec frame is authenticated only or it's authenticated and encrypted. Next, and this is the core concept of the can sec is the can secure channel identifier, which is used to do secure associations. So the first part is the secure channel identifier, which my colleague Vivian uh, Richards presented. So this is a secure channel identifier for each of secure channels, which is established within this layer two network. And the second part is the security association. Security association can be either zero or one, meaning it, if it's zero, it's pointing to key to um, key zero, which is currently the active key. Or if it's one, it means that key one is the current active key and the zero is the inactive one in order to support update of keys when the communication is ongoing. And um, the last part, so CANSEC uses a freshness value of 64 bits. This is a monotonically incremented counter. So freshness value is used for two purposes. First, for replay attack protection. So if the same freshness value is transmitted, the receiver will understand that there was a replay attack. So it can, it can also uh, act accordingly. And the second purpose is that in some security algorithms require an initialization vector, so or a, nonce, um, a number which is only used once as an input to the crypto algorithm. So the freshness value can be used to derive this special number, so this initialization vector or the nonce value, as the freshness value has the properties that this number require. So the freshness value is 64 bit, However, only a truncated part is transmitted with a CANSEC header. And on the receiver side, this freshness value is reconstructed on a complete 64-bit freshness value, and then it's used further. And the last part is the CANSEC tail, 
So this is the um, calculated message authentication code, and this is equal to 16 bytes. So now let me do some comparison of the CAN, today's CAN security protocols. First, we have SecoC. SecoC is a layer four plus, so it's an application layer protocol. The resources of SecoC are shared with multiple communication interfaces. So here, SecoC is not only used for CAN, but it can also be used for other communication interfaces like Flexray or LIN or other uh, net communication networks. It provides integrity, authenticity, and replay attack prevention. The drawbacks of SecoC are that, as I just presented, as I just explained, this is a layer four plus protocol, and it has much, it has difficulties to be implemented in hardware. So this is usually in today's networks, the like SecoC is only implemented in software, which um, introduces high CPU load. It does not provide any data privacy. It is only protecting the payload because this is due to the layer where this is applied, it only protects the payload. It does not provide a standardized freshness value for synchronization. So across different implementations, we have different uh, freshness value synchronizations for SQL C. And it does not support for key updates when the communication is ongoing. Next is this black or white listening approach, which also um, the presentation, so the previous presentation was explaining as well. So this is, this can be either implemented in a CAN controller, so in a layer two, or it can be implemented in a layer one. So this is the type of firewall. And additionally to the firewall, you can also break the frame. So what you do here is that depending on the CAN ID, so this is today, this is only working on the CAN ID, so on the priority ID. This is a physical or a Mac layer protocol and it's only applicable to CAN. So this is not a resource which is shared with other, um, with other interfaces. It's not a protocol, so it's a simple concept and it protects the complete frame. It's, it provides basic authenticity. So it does not provide a authentication code or so, but it provides authenticity due to its properties. And depending on the implementation, it can have no CPU or low CPU load. And it is easy up to middle, a difficulty to share with the complexity of the network. However, the drawbacks is that first, it's not the right solution for CAN Excel because the ID in CAN Excel is only used as a priority ID and not as a information uh, regarding the data or regarding the protocols. Further, it does not provide keys, does not provide data privacy, no integrity and no replay attack prevention. Last, we have CANSEC, and CANSEC is a layer two plus protocol. It is only applicable to CAN, so it's not shared with other interfaces. It protects the complete frame. So it provides a complete security set of integrity, authenticity, replay attack prevention, and privacy. In case, so in case this is implemented in hardware, then the CPU load is quite low. And it's easy to scale with complexity of the network. It offers the key update key update feature when the communication is ongoing and it provides security isolation by using the concept of CAN zones. So now let me um, explain how does a CANSEC look like in a CAN bus. So here we have uh, four ECUs and we have a secure channel built from ECU A towards ECU B and ECU D. ECU A needs to store the information about this secure channel. So it has a secure channel A, which in this case is a transmit channel. The ID of this one is equal to one. This um, information stored regarding secure channel A is the security association zero. So it has a key or a pointer to a key zero. And for the security association one, it has a key or a pointer to a key one. And it has a freshness value. Same in the other. So in the other direction, ECUB and ECUD need to store the same information regarding the secure channel. However, now this channel is a receive channel. So it's not a transmit like for ECUA. 
and they need to store the same data. So regarding the key, regarding the security association and which one is the current active association in use. So after this is established, secure communication can happen from ECUA towards B and D. So as I noted at the beginning of the presentation, the standard is currently in development. So let me share now some timelines of the current uh, development of the standard. So this is CAMSEC and the um, document according is the CIA 613-2. So January 2020, we presented a concept idea regarding CANSEC uh, to, uh, in the CIA CANIC Cell Special Interest Group, and we requested for establishment of a standardization group for security in CANIC Cell. Later, there was um, the special task force was founded under the name of Security Task Force, which is part of the CIA CAN Excel SIC group. The scope of the task force was uh, created and the chairman was uh, elected. So there's Peter Decker, Mr. Peter Decker from Vector Informatics and the members registration was done. Fast forward to next year, the first standard draft was created and distributed to its members. Here in the standard, the pro pro so the definitions of the protocol entity of the interfaces of the recommended security algorithms, frame format, Etc. So key policies and more concepts were specified and documented as well. So today we are still working on freshness value management, initialization, synchronization, refinement of header bit fields, SEI mapping, etc. And by today, the specification draft is roughly, let's say, 50% completed. And by end of this year, the target is to have a first complete technical stable standard. So now coming to the summary, let me wrap up with these key takeaway points. So first, using standard solutions, so unified and standard solution allows to have so unified implementation and which reduces the system cost with this uh, standardized security solution. Second, it is not necessary to reinvent the wheel. So we can benefit from using existing and robust security solution. CANSEC uses concept from security which are already established in other communication networks, for example, in Ethernet, MaxSec. These features have already been proven to satisfy communication requirements from security perspective, as well as performance perspective. And of course, tailoring of these to a CAN network is necessary. Third, Scalability of a network is an important aspect. Mr. Schanze from Volkswagen showed in his keynote presentation, I think two days ago, how the vehicle, how the in-vehicle network has evolved through the years. Also, he presented the future, so the expectations in the CAN networks. And one important point was scalability. Thus, for a successful security solution, we need to have a scalable solution. And CANSEC, with this concept of security zones, and secure channels offers capabilities to expand the secure network with reduced efforts. So four, CANSEC supports a complete security set, which is authenticity, confidentiality, integrity, and replay attack prevention. Due to its layer, so CANSEC is layer two protocol, it is closer to the ha hardware. So it is rather easy to implement it in hardware, which allows for hardware-based implementation. So it eases and it, can, um, it, su it uh, supports line speed security. And last but not least, it enables headroom for satisfying upcoming security needs, whether this is a performance need or whether this is a security, new security property. And yes, we can secure the communication. Thank you very much for your attendance. We are